Hi, I'm Teresa Frosini. Welcome to a new kind of show where we visit DFW area restaurants and find out what's hot and what's not in the world of food. We don't use professional restaurant critics to give us the dish. We use ordinary people just like you. Let's see what's cooking this week right here on Local Fair. This week, we're here at Bowl and Barrel. It's a new and unique restaurant here in North Dallas. There's really no place like Bowl and Barrel anywhere in Dallas-Fort Worth. It's a hip restaurant and bar accompanied by 15 upscale bowling lanes. The atmosphere here is best described as a modern American take on an old European beer hall. A place where you can sit at a communal table, order a giant house-baked pretzel, or some freshly shucked oysters and wash it all down with a stein of cold beer. After you finish dining in the cozy restaurant and bar, you will naturally gravitate to one of the upscale lanes to work off your delicious meal and enjoy an exciting round of bowling. The experience at Bowl and Barrel is so unique and fun that you won't be left feeling like you're in the gutter. Okay, so here's how it works. Three people from the DFW area suggest their favorite restaurant. The other two go for a visit, then they all come back and tell us what they think. Our guests this week are Eric Salzer, a director of operations for a management company here in Dallas. Haley Chappell is an interior designer based in Dallas. And Victoria Snee, fashion and beauty expert and foodie also from Dallas. Eric suggested one of Oak Cliff's most popular eateries. It's in the Bishop Arts District. It's called Bolsa. Hi, my name is uh, Jeff Harris. I'm the executive chef of Bolsa and Bolsa Mercado, uh, located in a Oak Cliff neighborhood in Dallas, Texas. Uh, kind of our philosophy here is like we really see what's in season, what's local. We buy a lot of stuff from local farms and purveyors, so uh, we try to put that kind of the forefront on the menu. And then kind of go, the menu kind of develops from there. But right now we're doing a um, house-made ricotta cavatelli dish with pork cheeks and fresh Texas peaches that are in season, so that's been a real big seller here lately. Bruschetta uh, tasting for sure as an appetizer. Um, right now there's, we're doing one with like uh, Marfa local heirloom tomatoes and burrata, uh, pressed melon and cucumber on one, so it's really light and fresh. And it's also a great dish, like a sharing dish, so you know, two or four people can kind of order it. It's also a family style and they kind of share, so it's definitely our, probably our uh, most popular appetizer. Four or five ingredients on the plate, prepared very simply. I kind of let the you know the produce or whatever's on the plate kind of speak for itself instead of trying to cover it up with a bunch of sauces or stuff. So Eric, you chose Bolsa. Why, what makes you pick that restaurant? You know, it's really become one of my favorite restaurants. I love the neighborhood. I love the feel. Uh, whether I go there for Sunday brunch with maybe too many Bloody Marys and duck fat biscuits, <laughs> or if I go there for dinner with friends and my wife. You know, it's always a perfect place. It's, it's just, we really enjoy every part of it. Excellent. Now, Victoria, tell us a little bit about your experience. When I first pulled up, I was a little surprised because it, I think it used to be a gas station, maybe? So it's an older building, yeah. And so I thought that that was really, really cool. And I was excited that the food was so organic and kind of, you know, farm to table. I love that aspect of it. And what was the entree that you, that you chose? It was hard to decide what I wanted because there were so many fabulous options. So we definitely started with a flatbread. I love flatbread. So I thought, you know what, I want to try the flatbread, see what that's like. So we tried the margarita flatbread, which was delicious. And I loved it because the crust wasn't, it wasn't too thick. Thick, but it wasn't too thin either so I really felt like it was had some you know substantial it was a good substance and then I tried the ricotta pasta which I never have pasta but I was like I've got to try it because they just they really sold me on it okay Haley how about you how about for you what was your experience at Bolsa well you know I've actually been to Bolsa a few times before do you have a favorite that you like to order there or do you choose I do things? I do I always order the lamb chop but unfortunately that was not on the menu this time they have a limited menu because it is very organic and it's fresh ingredients and I do believe they changed the menu you know based on where where they get the ingredients and so I ordered the pork chop and it was really good but I can't say I would order it again I'll probably get the lamb chop next time if it is available okay so let's talk about the value uh, at Bolsa I think the value is amazing I think for the level of service and the quality of ingredients 
it you know being farm to fork and really kind of supporting the, the local community I think that's a it's a great value I was surprised at how inexpensive some of the dishes were. I mean, a flatbread was maybe $10, an entree was 15 and maybe 20 bucks. And at a, you know, other restaurants with that kind of quality food, you're gonna pay a lot more. So I think it's certainly a great place for anyone on a budget. So overall, if you had to give this a star rating, one through five, let's start with you, Victoria. How would you rate Bolsa? You know, I would definitely say four out of five stars. And the only reason I wouldn't give it five out of five is Next time I go, I really want to try and sit indoors. I think that when we sat outdoors, oddly enough, our table was almost like on a slope of the on the. Did you notice that? Yes. Okay. So funny. I might have sat where you Maybe sat we because we had to put one. sugar packets underneath yes. the table. Yes. To keep and I felt like I was almost like kind of like catty corner when I was seated. So I was like, this is a little off. Eric, I know it's one of your favorites. What? what how would you rate this restaurant? You know, I think that. You know, for the experience of what it is, not being pretentious, not being dressed, is a five out of five. Um, you know, every time I go, you know, the bruschettas are always great, but I've, my, my kind of standby now is going to the, um, the bolsa margarita flatbread. The smoked tomatoes are excellent. It does get a little wet sometimes, but it's worth the, the knife and fork to, uh, from a flavor standpoint. Did anyone do dessert? Because we did not, and I regret this. Yeah. I, we should have tried dessert. So let's talk about what are some of their desserts. Well, I had the white chocolate rum cake. I think it was called the uh, rum cake tile. And it was a white chocolate custard with a banana split on top and the sugar was caramelized and they toasted it kind of like a cream brulee. Oh, that sounds great. Amazing. We ate the whole entire thing. Oh, that sounds <laughs> really good. Any downside besides the besides the patio maybe being a little leaning, is there any other downside that you that you saw there at all? Honestly, no. I mean, the only thing maybe would be the parking situation. It was, seemed a little bit hectic down, just in that area, I think in general, the parking can be challenging. But besides that, no problems whatsoever. How about for you, Haley? I know you've been there several times. I would so. say the same thing, the parking, I mean, when it's really busy. But, you know, on a Wednesday night, we didn't have any trouble. Sure. So. Sure. We loved it. Good choice. When we come back, we take a look at a Dallas institution that's known as much for its bar as it is its food. Next on Local Fair. Once upon a time, this was a two newspaper town, and it was a bar that catered to the, the journalist. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bull and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bull and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back to Local Fair, where we take three DFW restaurant goers, have them suggest their favorite restaurant, the other two then go try it out, and then they come back here and tell us what they think. Haley says Louie's on Henderson is much more than just a local bar hangout. It's a place where the food isn't fancy, but it sure is tasty. Hello, my name is Christopher Kanalikis. The style of pizza is was called a thin crust bar pizza. It was originated, well, I guess, when everybody came back from World War II. Uh, the servicemen had a taste for the pizza that when they were fighting over there, so a lot of them were in the Navy. They learned how to, they got a few recipes that came back. No smoking ban came into effect in early 2000. Had to really concentrate on uh, the food angle start getting even more serious than just pizza. We always brought in steaks and fish and before we were just mainly just pizza and salads. We tried to cover the bases. Okay, so Haley, tell me why you picked Louis. Well, I picked Louis because it is such a surprise the first time you go. From the outside, it is nothing fancy at all. It's a total dive bar. The minute you walk in, there's an eclectic mix of people. People are in workout clothes. People have their, you know, suits on from work. It is total mix, and it's awesome. You know, you go, you order a few drinks, and the best part about it is the pizza. Pizza is amazing. I've been there so many times. They know me, 
and I always order the cheese pizza. It's amazing. So that's that's your go-to every time. Absolutely. Cheese Absolutely. Pizza. All right, great. So, Eric, tell me about your experience when you when you checked out Louis. Oh, I, I love Louis as well. You know, it's a it's a staple for sure. You know, I always start with the meatballs. They're giant. They got marinara sauce on top. It's, it's a meal in itself for sure. But um, and then the pizza is, you know, I love the thin crust. You know, I'm from the Northeast, so it kind of reminds me of how pizza is to me or pizza should be. Um, you know, very simple ingredients, straightforward, but, you know, perfect. I know that they are known also for desserts. Have you ever tried their pies? Yes, I have had their pies. They're, they're chocolate pie and they're coconut, I think coconut chest pie is very, very good. Wonderful. So obviously one you're going to keep going back to then. Without question. Sure. Without question. How, Victoria, tell me about your experience at Louis. Well, my husband really wanted to go and check out Louis, and, you know, I was trying to be good and, you know, stick to my diet. So I said, oh, I'll just go to Louis and have a salad. Then we got talked into getting their pizza. And I'm not much of a meat eater. I don't like to eat a lot of different meats, especially I don't really, not into pepperoni, not into sausage. But they said, you know what, we make our own sausage. If you're going to get a pizza here, you have to try the sausage pizza. So I said, okay. I will try it. I am so glad that I did. It was delicious. I mean, it, you could really taste how fresh it was. It was so flavorful. I mean, I took one bite, one slice, then another, then another, and the next thing we know, the entire pizza was gone. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I think I like this pizza. And I think one of the things that you had that is important is that you don't judge it by the yes. book by the cover. You don't yes. look at the outside of it and, and make your decision based on that. Yeah, because if you did, I think you would drive right by it and not even think twice about stopping, you know? So I'm glad that we stopped and ate and it was, you know, a place I will definitely go back to. So let's rate this one as well. And we'll start, Eric, let's start with you. As far as one through five stars, how would you rate Louis? I think that it's a, it's a four star. It's a four star dive bar pizza, you know, if that's, if that makes sense. Um, you know, getting to a point before is that, you know, kind of the outside, you know, what might be a drawback in the beginning becomes part of the charm afterwards because it's you're kind of in the know when you go there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely four out of five. How about for you, Victor? I would say the same. I would say four out of five. It's, it is. You feel like you're in the know. You're on the inside. It's a hidden gem. So I would say definitely four out of five. And Haley, I know that you recommended it. So how would you how would yes. you rate it? I would say a five out of five. As many times as I've been, it's so good. Every single time I go, favorite thing to do is order pizza and a beer, just hang out. I can go with anybody. I can go with my parents. I can go with coworkers. I can, you know, it's easy. It's fun, and you know, there's not much to it. So talk a little about the value. Oh, I think the price is great. I mean, I think you can go in there and for twenty dollars eat as much pizza and drink as many cold beers as you want to and enjoy a, a great night. It's really, you really get a ton of food. I mean, you leave there definitely feeling full, but not overstuffed. I think we had probably a couple salads in between us, the pizza, several glasses of wine perhaps, and I think it was like 50 bucks. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. Louis is a Dallas institution. Next, we visit the west side of the Metroplex to visit one of Fort Worth's finest dining experiences. It's called Ellerby. We'll be right back. One day you might come in on a Tuesday and have a great halibut, and then by the end of the week, maybe it's no longer the season and we've switched over to redfish out of the Gulf. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bull and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bull and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back. We have one more restaurant to discuss this week. It was suggested by Victoria. Located in Fort Worth, Ellerby offers an innovative menu that's filled with local flavor. I'm Richard King uh, with co-owner and general manager of Ellerby Fine Foods in Fort Worth, Texas. When we started the restaurant basically in 2009, is that uh, we're one of the really first ones to do true farm-to-table. It's important for us to uh, 
serve the best fresh local ingredients as we can every day. You're walking into this restaurant, you're, you're walking into a home, not necessarily just a restaurant. And Molly's food kind of shines that same way. Hi, I'm Molly McCook, executive chef and co-owner of LRB Fine Foods here in Fort Worth, Texas. We try to keep the menu as fresh as possible, so with this, it can change on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, depending on the time of the year and how quickly um, produce is coming up at the market. I shop the farmer's market at least twice a week so that we have the freshest ingredients here at all times. So one day you might come in on a Tuesday and have a great halibut, and then by the end of the week, maybe it's no longer the season and we've switched over to redfish out of the Gulf. Okay, Victoria, you chose Ellerby. Tell us why. I love the atmosphere. I think the service is outstanding. And the food is just bar none. It's amazing. Again, it's that farm to fork, as you said so well, Eric. And it's just, it's tasty, it's fresh, it's organic, and it's just really flavorful. And I love going there. Do you have a favorite that you like to get, either a favorite appetizer or entree? I do. I love the heirloom tomato salad. Have you had that before? It is, it is my favorite as well. It is so good. And I just love heirloom tomatoes, especially when they're in season. They're amazing. And then, of course, they're also known for their redfish. So whenever I go, I always tend to get the redfish. I love fish anyway, and they prepare it so well. It's so flavorful. It's very light. It's nothing heavy. They don't do a lot of sauces, which I like as well. They keep it really clean and fresh, and it's just, it's wonderful. So I always tend to get the redfish. Okay. okay. So Eric, tell me, you you were able to go and try it. Talk yes. about your experience there. There's certainly kind of a, a, a uh, an elegance to it. You know, I like how everything was white and clean. I like all the little um, Christmas lights that are kind of hanging. Uh, really beautiful little place. But I think the attention to detail that the servers, or, or that they really all the service has, and also the kitchen shows to their food. Again, I think very simple, very, um, you know, they, they let the, the food stand for itself. Really very impressive. And then on the entree was the duck confit. And I'm a, I'm a big duck fan, and it's, you know, it's hard to find a really good duck confit. And, you know, the, um, the, it was cooked absolutely perfect. It had a port fig sauce that I thought was really a little sweet to it that just gave it the perfect compliment, and um, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And then how about for dessert? Did you try any of their desserts? Yes, yes I did. I had the bread pudding. I'm guilty. <laughs> but that's what they're famous for too. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. He was, uh, the server kind of, I don't think you can get out of there without having it. And he, he told us, with the, it has a whiskey sauce, it has pecan pralines, um, and I told them, I said, you had me at whiskey sauce, I'll take it. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was definitely, that's worth the drive alone, but really amazing. Wonderful. Okay, Haley, how about for you? Tell me about your experience at LRB. It was just such a great experience. We walked in and it had such an organic feel to it. It was wonderful. We had a few drinks at the bar. It was a Saturday night, so it was really crowded. And it was really, really good. The service was amazing. And I had the arugula salad to begin with, and then I had the scallops. and scallops are my absolute favorite and it was definitely one of the best entrees I've had in a long time. As far as the price do you feel the it was a good value for Absolutely. your money? Yeah the service was great like I said and the food was just like you said you know farm to fork and it was really really fresh and it was amazing I would definitely go back. Okay so let's rate this one we'll start with you Victoria as far as one out of five stars how would you rate LRB? I think when I think of service the atmosphere and the food five out of five. Absolutely. Excellent. Haley, how about for you? How would you rate it? I would give it a four. Sure. It was really, really good, and I would definitely go back. I actually was on a first date the first time that I went. Did, it, did you have a second date? Uh, I did have a second date, and <laughs> yeah. he's now my boyfriend, so I will say, yeah, it was a good, good experience. Yeah. <laughs> Positive good vibes. That's a, that's a five for sure, then. <laughs> there you okay. go. I know. <laughs> yeah. Ellery gets two five stars and a relationship. Not too bad. Stay with us when we come back. Our restaurant expert, Kyle Noonan, will come along and have his thoughts on our three local eateries. We'll be right back. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. 
Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bull and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bull and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Joining us now is restaurateur Kyle Noonan, who's had a long history in the Dallas restaurant scene, and he knows what works and what doesn't in the Metroplex. So, Kyle, we talked about Bolsa and LRB this evening and how they change out their menus. Talk a little bit about that trend in the restaurant area now. Right. Well, you know, there's really this huge groundswell of restaurants moving towards this whole local vor movement or farm to fork or farm to table it's called all different things but really at the heart of it what it is is it's about getting fresh local ingredients seasonal ingredients and changing out that menu on a regular basis now one of the things Haley had mentioned is when she goes to bolsa's she loves one dish and she had gotten it several times and then it was gone a lot of people have issues with change how is this for the customers when they come in? How are restaurants dealing with that? Yeah, well, you know, what the consumer sacrifices in consistency and, and getting that same meal over and over again, that gain in product quality, product freshness, and really what they're doing is, is supporting this healthy lifestyle of getting fresh ingredients that are unprocessed foods to the table and, and really enjoying their dining experience that way. So I think all in all, you, you, you might sacrifice a little bit, but you gain much more. And that's why restaurants more and more today are moving towards that. All right, let's talk about Comfort Zone. Let's talk about Louis, Dallas Institution. Yes, well, I've got to say, I've done exhaustive research on, on what makes a great bar. And Louis absolutely has every element of a great bar. It's, it's comfortable, it's cozy, it's a place that's familiar. Even, though, even if you've never been there before, you feel like you've been there 100 times. Mm -hmm. uh, the bartenders know your name. And, and it's really a go, good place to go after work, wash away the day, or, or meet with friends. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a come as you are. Louis in general is very comfortable in its own skin. And everybody that's in there is very comfortable in their own skin as well. Kyle, thank you so much. You bet. Next week on Local Fair, we'll visit a hidden gem, a new mom and pop, and a place to see and be seen. And we'll hear what our guest reviewers think about each other's favorites. And if you would like to be a guest on Local Fair, visit our website at localfairdfw.com and click on Be a Guest Reviewer. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your local fair. We'll see you next week.